The Bradford Exchange has been around for many years, since before I was born even, and they sell a wide variety of collectibles, things that are kind of geared toward, I guess, the general populace. If I had to describe their target audience, I would say they skew older and perhaps more female than someplace like uh, Sideshow Collectibles or something like that. Uh, they're definitely a little bit more on the kitschy side. They have a lot of the old standbys, like John Wayne-related merchandise. Here's a, uh, a collection of Zippo lighters that you, by the way, have to subscribe to. You pay $50 a month, and they'll send you one every month until you get the whole collection, which is one of their uh, common tactics that they use. They also have here a uh, John Wayne knife collection, which you can, again, subscribe to for $60 and get a knife with John Wayne's picture on it sent to you every month. And, of course, they have just general random stuff like these snow globes or winter village figurines. Uh, this Thomas Kincaid Crystal 3D Santa Claus figurine seems like a bargain at $130. Uh, you know, this is the kind of thing that maybe my mom or my grandma would have liked when I was a kid, I think, and they still make them today. Ooh, In God's Hands figurine collection. There's another good one. Uh, point is, this may not be the kind of thing you would normally associate with Star Wars collectibles necessarily, but they do have a surprisingly large selection of Star Wars stuff. So if we take a quick look at what they have here, right off the bat I see this Star Wars Sith vs. Jedi wall clock with light-up lightsabers. It's a Star Wars cuckoo clock, essentially. Although I don't know if it actually cuckoos. That is something else, isn't it? $220 for that. So we're off to a good start, but they've also got things like lamps, uh, clothing, jewelry, I guess, figurines, uh, various other things that we're going to be looking at uh, in a little bit more detail, as well as, uh, oh, they've got uh, mugs, I guess I should say steins, a giant Star Wars Han Solo Millennium Falcon porcelain stein for $130. I don't know if I love this or hate it, but uh, yeah, it's definitely something. And I'll be honest with you, if they made a Jabba version of that, I would buy it in a second. I suppose I'm lucky that they don't have too much Jabba-related merchandise because I would have felt obligated to buy it. But as it is, I have picked up a few things over the years from the Bradford Exchange and their related companies. And so that's what we're going to look at today. The first thing I want to look at is this Star Wars Galactic Village collection. This is a collection of... Star Wars buildings, miniature buildings, that they send out once a month or so. Uh, they also have these little figurines of various Star Wars characters that go along with the buildings. And they're also illuminated, so they have a little light inside that you can turn on. It seems like a pretty good idea, actually. And interestingly enough, this collection has been around since 2008, which is just an eternity when you think of typical collectibles. They usually are just released and maybe you can get them in a year or two after their release if you're lucky but most of the time if you don't get them more or less right around the time they're released you have to get them on the secondary market whereas this they've been churning out these things for well over a decade and the entire collection is well over a dozen items although i couldn't find anywhere a list of the actual things that are included in the collection which is a little bit of a problem so the first item we're going to look at is jabba's palace and you know what? There aren't really very many Jabba's Palace-themed collectibles out there. In fact, in terms of high-end or high-ish end uh, statues or figures or anything like that, there is nothing as far as I'm aware of. So it's actually really nice that this exists. And honestly, it looks pretty decent. Let's look at it in a little bit more detail here. We've got this kind of craggy rock here and then the palace itself. If we look closely at this paint job. It's a little bit, um, you know, hand done looking, which I, you know, I mean, it could be a, a plus in your book, depending on how you want to look at it. You can see some brush strokes and things like that, but the actual sculpt itself looks really good, I think. And it's, it's a really cool item to have kind of in the back of a Jabba themed display of some kind. So I really like this piece. Um, you know, it's got a decent weight to it. I guess it's made of some kind of a, I don't know, polystone or plaster. Um, if we want to look at the bottom, you can see it says Jabba the Hutt's Palace, fifth issue in the Star Wars Galactic Village collection. 
and it's dated 2009. Now you notice that it's got a uh, battery door here. Uh, I had kind of a rude awakening when I got these out recently to do this video. I found that this and the other one that I have had actually corroded batteries in both of their uh, battery compartments. You should never leave batteries in a toy or a uh, collectible like this, but I just forgot. I really should know better because I actually uh, collect and restore old electronics, and that's like the worst thing, the worst uh, problem that you have with electronics, uh, or one of them, is batteries that have leaked. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of ashamed of that, but I was able to fix it by just using some uh, white vinegar and neutralizing the alkaline that had leaked out of the batteries and cleaned it all up and actually it still works just fine so if you want to uh, flip this switch here we can see the light turn on whoops <laughs> um, if I had batteries in there I do have that what the heck is it just too oh it's too too bright to see all right I tried showing the light a second ago, but it couldn't really be seen at all because of my very bright studio lights. But if we turn off the lights and leave it in sort of darkness or semi-darkness, you can see that there's a light here, a light underneath the gate there, and also there. Not the most thrilling light-up feature, if I'm honest, but I don't know, it's kind of cool that it's there. I just recommend that you definitely take out the batteries if you're going to use it. Uh, it also has, all of these apparently, have a thing where you can plug it into AC power if you really wanted to have this all on one display and kind of maybe connected to one switch that you just flip for all of them. That might be a good idea. Speaking of light, let's go ahead and look at the Java figure that came with it. Here we have Jabba on his throne. This is not the most amazing paint job I've ever seen, but it's really not that bad. And I like the sculpt here. I like the fact that he's on the the full throne. Um, not a lot to complain about here, really. You know, the paint here is a little bit uh, basic, I guess, but it does, it does have several colors. And uh, it looks to have been done with maybe washes or perhaps um, an airbrush. I can't quite tell but not really that bad. If we look on the bottom, you can see it says Jabba the Hutt, 2009 Hawthorne Village. So uh, definitely I would give this a thumbs up. It's a really nice little piece for a Jabba collector and definitely adds something to a Jabba display. I have one other item in the Galactic Village collection that I'm gonna show you, and that one is a little bit more of a mixed bag, and that is the Sail Barge. I have shown this one on the channel before, actually, in my uh, Sail Barge Bonanza video that I did a while back, but uh, it's worth looking at again, I think, in the context of today's video. This one is actually a fairly nice sized model, and it's not terribly painted either. Uh, you know, it's not up to the standards of people who really care about models and things like that, but it, it looks pretty decent, actually, from a reasonable distance. Uh, if we look on the bottom, it says Jabba's Sail Barge, ninth issue in the Star Wars Galactic Village collection. And this one is dated 2010. Um, yeah, honestly, the actual barge itself is pretty decent, and there isn't anything really comparable to this that you can uh, compare it to. <laughs> so, you know, if you wanted a a figure of the Sail Barge that's not a toy, you know, kind of like a statue, this is about it, so uh, I'm actually pretty happy with this. The light-up feature, on the other hand, is fairly underwhelming. If I reach under here and turn it on, let's see if you can even notice it. <laughs> uh, that's it. That lights up. As far as I can tell, nothing else does. It would have been nice if they could have had some of these um, shutters have light come out from behind them or something, but as it is, that's the, that's your lot. That's all you get, and... Uh, doesn't really even seem worth putting batteries in it, to be honest with you. Now, this also comes with a figure, as all of these do. And in this case, it is Leia in her slave outfit. Hutslayer Leia, if you prefer. Uh, it's very, very similar 
in pose to the gentle giant statue that came out a while back. But, of course, way, 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 way smaller. And to be fair, if you're looking at it at a normal distance, it looks halfway decent. It's it's a very small miniature. But if we look at it a bit closer up, especially around the face, it is a little rough, to be honest with you. Now, again, to be fair, this is a very small figure. If you compare this to the size of a Q-tip, her head is considerably smaller than a Q-tip. I don't know if I could do this uh, fine paintwork like this, even to this standard. So I don't want to be too critical of it. But uh, overall, I think for a Jabba fan, this is pretty good. Uh, there is, I think, one other Jabba-related one that I don't have. I was reminded of it just recently that... Um, uh, supposedly, anyway, they have a Sarlacc version as well, which I may have to look into getting. I don't, as I said earlier, have a full list of all of the villages that they produce, so I'm not entirely sure what else there is. Maybe uh, if you have any of these, you could chime in and let me know what your favorites are. I would recommend, however, uh, if you are interested in getting any of these, probably just to look on eBay, because these, especially the uh, Jabba's Palace one, I see fairly regularly on eBay, and you can often get them cheaper than what the Bradford Exchange is trying to charge for them. Uh, plus, you don't have to have any kind of subscription commitment or anything like that, so that would be my advice. Now that you've seen Leia, I think it's worth going back to their website and taking another look at what they show for these products. They don't have Leia up here, but they do have this Luke, for example, and if you look at it, it seems extremely detailed, uh, basically like photoshopped or airbrushed or something like that, not like a picture of an actual collectible. And as a matter of fact, I was able to find a picture of the actual Luke figure that they are sending out to people, and uh, this is what it looks like. So definitely manage your expectations if you're looking at any of these figures on their website. The next item we're going to look at is actually one of the more unique items I've seen on the site. It is a glow-in-the-dark HO scale model train with Star Wars themed cars. Again, they're not very forthcoming about what exactly is included in the collection. I don't have a list of the cars or the characters that are used, but I do know that they have a Jabba car because that's the one that I actually have, and I managed to get that on eBay for a lot less, less than half actually, than the $90 price that they're asking here. And here we have the Jabba the Hutt train itself. Uh, this is honestly one of the stranger items I have in my collection, and that's saying something. But it's got some nice artwork on here. We have Ula, Jawas, Jabba, Salacious Crumb, Bib Fortuna here. We've got a nice close-up of Jabba and his palace in the background there. And basically, yeah, it's the same thing on the other side as well. I don't really have much uh, to complain about here, aside from what they were or <laughs> would have been trying to charge for this, I guess. If we look closely, you can even see inside there are little seats and everything. I would like to try and uh, ride a Java train at some point in my life. That would be funny. And here you can see there's maybe a dining car or something in there. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. This is, of course, a real working model train car. So, I mean, I've never used it, but I assume that if you were to put it on a train set, it would work just fine. Uh, one other feature that of course we can't forget about is the fact that this glows in the dark. So let's go ahead and try that out. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show that to, do, to you today. I wasn't able to get this to show up on video, but I was able to take this photo of the glow effect, and it's actually pretty impressive. It looks a little better in this photo than it does in real life, to be honest with you, but it's not bad in real life as well. And uh, yeah, it's a really strange product in some sense, but if you're a fan of model trains and of Star Wars, I would think this would be perfect for you. The final item we're going to be looking at today is something that just came out in 2019, which is really recent compared to the other items I've been showing you. It is a Star Wars Perpetual Calendar Collection with display. Uh, this is a so-called perpetual calendar, so you have tiles that represent the days of the month that you kind of manually insert into a little holder, and the idea is that you have figures of Star Wars characters that each represent a month of the year, and you move them around uh, having the current month be at the top. And, uh, you know, that way you can always have a current calendar and kind of enjoy your Star Wars characters at the same time is the idea anyway. 
Of course, the reason I was interested in this is that they actually had Jabba as one of the characters right here, representing November. And it looked to be a unique sculpt from what I could tell, just given the uh, images on their website. Each issue of this subscription, and yes, it is a subscription, costs $60 and includes two of the figures. And also one issue includes the shelf on its own. And if my math is correct, it would cost you roughly $550, including tax and shipping, to get the entire calendar, which seems ludicrous to me. I really just wanted the Java, so I didn't want to just start at any time, because they give you just the next couple of months uh, based on when you order. So I've been trying to get the timing right to order this so I could get Java uh, for a couple of years now. In 2020, it was when I first heard about it. It was uh, kind of already too late, I guess, to order and then in 2021, I tried ordering, but I missed the timing again, and it looked like I was going to get the wrong one. So finally, in 2022, I managed to place an order and started off my subscription with November and December, which is Jabba and Vader. So uh, let's go ahead and show you what I received. All right, I have Jabba finally in my hands right here. Care to take a guess what he looks like before I do the big reveal? <laughs> well, here it is. Um, it's not great. The paintwork is pretty rough. It is done with an airbrush, it looks like, mostly. But it's nothing compared to that image that they showed on the website, which, again, for comparison's sake, you can look at them side by side there. Obviously, it would be foolish to think that you could get that same exact thing that they showed on the website, but I was hoping they'd get a little closer than this. Um... Still, it does appear to be a unique sculpt, which I really do appreciate. And this is the first item, official item, that I've seen that makes Jabba into a bust, essentially. So I do like it in that sense as well. Uh, it's kind of interesting that he has just November here. That's a little bizarre, right? Um, on the back, it does say Jabba the Hutt, though. And on the bottom, you can see it says November, May the Force be with you, Perpetual Calendar. Uh, the base is just feels kind of like hollow plastic to me kind of cheap plastic at that but the figure itself or the bust is kind of weighty it does have some weight to it like it's made out of plaster or polystone or something along those lines so you know it's not totally cheap it's not like you're getting just a cheap plastic figure but this could have been a lot better uh, I'm not sure Honestly, looking here at the uh, preview on my camera, it looks a little bit better than it does in real life. But uh, yeah, a little disappointing, but I'm glad to have it nonetheless. And since they sent these, uh, they send these out in twos, I also got Darth Vader for December. This one, I think, looks a little bit better in terms of the paintwork. It's a little bit of an odd choice for the pose, though. He's got his... Lightsaber held in a bit of an odd way with one hand, and he doesn't have the other hand at all. I mean, I guess that's appropriate for Star Wars in some sense, but... And then he's off to the front of the base as well. It looks a little strange to me. Now, the next one in the subscription would have been the actual uh, calendar shelving unit. And I considered maybe getting that and then canceling after that, and then using that shelving unit to make my own calendar by 3D printing some figures and putting them on there, but it seems like it would be a lot of work for something that I probably wouldn't really use. I don't have a place to display it very well. So I decided to just cancel right here. And uh, yeah, I mean, these were too expensive for what they are, but I'm still glad that I got this Jabba in my collection. I hope you enjoyed this look at some Star Wars collectibles from the Bradford Exchange. As you could probably tell, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Some of them, like the Galactic Villages, are actually pretty good, and I wouldn't really hesitate to recommend them, except for the fact that you have to get them through this subscription plan, which I don't really like. But, you know, if you can find them on eBay or whatever, it wouldn't be a bad idea to pick uh, whichever the ones you like up. Some of the other ones, like the Star Wars calendar, are probably best skipped. I'd be interested to know, though, if any of you have any items from the Bradford Exchange in your collections. Let me know in the comments. And thanks very much for watching. This video was brought to you with the help of my Patreon supporters, including these Palace VIPs, Angelica Brady and Jesper Murtu. 
Thanks very much for your support. I really do appreciate it. And if you'd like to know how you can support the channel for as little as a dollar a month, check out the link in the video description.